Welcome to incremental deployment in Big Data Management 10.2.2. Let's begin with applications. What is an application? An application is a container using which you can deploy objects from your design time to runtime. Application is how you group your executable objects such as mappings and workflows, bundle them together just like you would do a Java jar file and then send it over to a data integration service so that you can execute them. An application when built in the design time just holds references to the objects that are part of it. But when deployed to the runtime, a copy of those objects are made and passed over to the data integration service. This allows users to be able to modify the objects in the design time without impacting the jobs or the mappings and workflows that are executing on the runtime. Incremental deployment allows you to modify these applications in an incremental fashion. You can add new objects or you can modify existing objects without having to redeploy the whole application. This is extremely beneficial when you have mixed workloads such as batch mappings and streaming mappings. Both have different latencies and they have different timelines on when they are expected to execute. As part of the incremental deployment, you can redeploy any executable objects such as mappings and workflows. Now let's take a look at the overall process flow. As a user, you select a bunch of objects, such as mappings, that you want to deploy as part of an application. Now, this can, some of these can be new objects, or these can be modifications to existing objects. When you select the objects that you want to deploy incrementally as part of an application, we collect all the dependencies that these objects have on the runtime side. For example, you may be deploying a mapping that has a data object, but there may be another mapping that is part of the same application already deployed, which is also reusing the same data object. And we need to ensure that those mapping still remains valid. This is where the metadata sync and change control comes into play. So when you select a specific set of objects, we will bring in the corresponding related objects from the runtime set in memory make sure that resultant package is still valid and will not have any impact on your runtime side. Then the whole package is uh, collected together and either sent to a data integration service or to an application file known as PIAR, Patch Informatica Archive File. Now let's look at what happens when you have a mixed load of uh, mappings and workflows and you're uh, partially deploying uh, an application. For example, you as a user have selected map 1. This is what we call as a selected object. A selected object always has several dependencies. Some of them are what we call as direct and some of them indirect. When you as a user have selected map 1, this map 1 itself contains, let's say, a source, FF01, a flat file 01, a bunch of transformations, and a target, let's say, FF02. Now, some of these transformations, such as lookup, may have references to additional data objects. Now, all of these, which are part of the mapping, are what we call as direct dependencies. These will always be deployed per a given selected object, which means when you deploy map 1, the transformations within the data objects within that mapping are always redeployed. And that's how an incremental deployment package would look like when you select direct dependencies along with the mapping. Now let's talk about indirect dependencies. Indirect dependencies are those that are not part of the selected objects, but will be impacted as a resultant of the selected objects. So as you can see in the screen here, map2 uses the same data object as map1. You as a user have a choice to either redeploy the indirect objects or to only deploy the selected and the direct dependencies and let the indirect dependencies be revalidated. And if you select indirect dependencies as well to be redeployed as part of the incremental application, that's how the overall package would look like. Now, there is a third level of degree, which are the remote dependencies, and you as a user also have a choice to bring in the remote dependencies as well as part of your incremental deployment if you need to absolutely ensure that all dependencies are resolved and all these objects that are dependent on each other are completely redeployed. Let's switch to a quick demo. I have an application called app underscore data warehouse. This application already has a bunch of mappings as part of it. I have map one, map two, 
and map tree that are part of this application and the workflow. And these mappings are also having some flat file objects that depend on them. This application is already deployed onto my data integration service. As you can see here, I'm in the DSQA and in this DSQA, the app data warehouse is already deployed. It already has these mappings that I have deployed. Now I'm going to add a new mapping to this application and modify one of the existing mappings that are part of this application and incrementally deploy only those changes. Let's see how that's done. I'm going to click this new button here. Go to my project, the corresponding subfolder, and select map 4. You will notice here that map 1, 2, and 3 are not shown in this list because they are already part of the application. I'm going to click OK. Now I will go back to map 1 that's part of this application and I'm going to make a small change. Let's say I'll select a specific boot and then I'll delete it. Let's just right click, validate, there are no problems found. I'm going to save this mapping. This map is already part of my application. Here it is. Let's save the application. And I'm going to do an incremental deployment. To do so, I will select the application, right click, do update application objects. Now you'll notice that the wizard has automatically identified my runtime application based on the default DAS that I have selected. So you can see that it has already identified the app data warehouse is present in the default DS and it has selected that as my runtime application. As a user, I do have a choice to browse and choose a different environment or a different data integration service and deploy these changes to a different environment. Let's click next. All right, now here are all the objects that I have. Now you can see that when I select map four, map three is dependent on it. Now I have a choice in terms of whether I want to only deploy the direct, indirect, or direct, indirect, and remote dependencies as well. Now if I only do the direct dependencies, now you see that map four is the only one that gets deployed. But what happens if I choose map one? You can see that all the flat files zero, zero 01 and zero 02 as I demonstrated in my PowerPoint presentation will be automatically selected. Let's say I want to do build. Now, if I choose indirect dependencies, along with the direct dependencies, you will see that map two and map three are also coming into play because map one's related objects are map two as well. Similarly, I can select direct, indirect, and remote dependencies as well. For now, I'm going to go with the direct and indirect dependencies. Now, when you do that, you can see that in this particular scenario, it's going to update eight of them and only add one of them. But if I remove map one, you will see that it will only bring map three and map four, and I'm adding map three, map four, but map three is brought in to ensure the dependencies are resolved. Okay. Now let's switch to the data dependencies, and I'm going to just do map one and map four. Now I do have a choice to preview the application. When I do a preview, what happens is it will compare my objects on the design time to the runtime side and then show what's the impact of this. Now you can see here that map four is getting added, map one is getting modified, and there are a bunch of objects that are affected because there are shared data objects between map one, map two, and map three. All right, let's click next. Now, while doing the incremental deployment, I can specify a patch name for this change. For example, I'm going to call it as patch 001. And I have a choice to either directly deploy to a data integration service or to a file. In this example, I'm going to go with a data integration service. Let's click finish. That's it. 
now the package is sent over to my data integration service it's done let's quickly go to the data integration service and see if this patch has been received all right so i go to my ds prod and i'm going to see that the map 4 and map 1 are present here and the patch history has patch 001 which is the patch just i deployed all right that's with the demo now you can use the incremental deployment in conjunction with deployment automation meaning you can use it in conjunction with version control systems such as git ticketing and routing systems such as jira and deployment technologies such as jenkins for more details on how you can automate this using these external tools watch my video on deployment automation in big data management this is available in our big data community portal at network.informatica.com thank you for watching this video